All right, so we're looking at indefinite integrals with the constant of integration, okay? Um, as we've discussed, many functions can have the same derivative depending on what constant term they have. We saw earlier that, you know, if you take the derivative of x cubed, x cubed plus 5, or x cubed minus 2, all of those have a derivative of 3x squared. All right, so if we're taking the antiderivative or the indefinite integral, okay, the indefinite integral of 3x squared dx, we need to consider the fact that there could be any real number added to our result, okay? Oh, that's a x squared, okay? So when we take the integral and we determine that that is x cubed, okay? And it's really 3x cubed over 3, which would reduce down to x cubed we need to account for the fact that there are an infinite number of possibilities depending on what constant is added here. All right, so that's why we put the x squared plus c, or the x cubed plus c, I should say. All right. Now, that... We already talked about in section B. Your book doesn't introduce this fact until now, but we introduced it earlier. What we are going to look at, though, um, what we are going to look at, though, is discovering integrals by considering derivatives. And if you remember, this is how we came up with our initial rule for x to the n. We logically figured out, okay the thing that would have that derivative would have one higher power, but how did we get rid of that coefficient? We'd have to divide. Um, so we can kind of do a similar concept here. Since integration is the reverse process of differentiation, we can sometimes discover integrals by differentiation. All right, so... Notice here, we're not starting up out with the problem. We're actually starting by considering a derivative, all right? So we're going to say, well, let's suppose that the antiderivative is this x to the fourth, okay? If you remember, you have f of x and you have capital F of x, all right? The integral allows us to go from the function to the antiderivative. The derivative allows us to go back to the original function. Okay? So if we start with the antiderivative, you take the integral okay, then you just showed that, all right, well, if I took the integral of that result, that would get me back to the original function or the original function plus some constant c. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Basically, we're making up our own identities, or we're trying to come up with our own identities, or our own rules. Um, so in this case, we came up with the rule that the integral from four, of 4x cubed dx is x to the fourth. So you can come up with any rule you want? You can come up with any rule you want. Okay, if you start with a function, take the derivative then the integral of that result will equal your original function. Okay? Here's another example. Okay? 
let's say that our antiderivative is x to the 1 half. Well, if I take the derivative of that, if I take the derivative of x to the 1 half, you guys know this by now, it's 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 root x. So, I know that the integral of this will take me back to here. All right? So the integral of 1 over 2 root x dx is the square root of x plus c. Okay? So we're trying to consider, you know, what, if this is our, the result of our integral, its derivative would be this, therefore the integral will take us back to the original function, okay? We're kind of seeing that cycle um, going back and forth between them, okay? Now, Let's kind of take this one step at a time, all right? Suppose we have y equal to uh, the square root of 5x minus 1. What would dy dx equal? What would we get here? Do you need to rewrite this? Negative 5 times 5x minus 1 to the negative 2. Okay, what are you guys saying? What is it? Negative 5 minus 2 to the negative 2. Well, I'm not saying it is. Let's see what it is. Okay, I'm asking you guys if you agree. How would you rewrite this to get the integral, or to get the derivative? Okay. So. Oh, oops. Yeah, it's not right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're thinking negative one power yeah. instead of half power. All right, but you're on the right track. We do have a five out here because we're going to use the chain rule. All right. So we've multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, but what do we do with this one half power? Bring it around the front and then raise it to the negative one. Okay. We're taking the derivative, so we bring the one half out in front, so it's a half times that five, and then we would have this to what power? Negative one. Negative one half power. All right. So this would equal. 5 halves times 1 over the square root of 5x minus 1. Now, I know we don't normally write our answers that way, but I did here because look at what we're trying to find on part B. Okay? I don't get why you brought 5 out. Because we have the chain rule. The chain rule for for derivatives. We're taking derivatives here, right? So one half times this to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside. Okay. Okay. I know we we're switching gears between derivatives and integrals, and you kind of have to be able to keep it straight which one you're finding on each step. Okay. Now, um, think with me here. We have, we want to find the integral of just this part, okay? Well, we know, we know that if we took the integral of this whole thing, Root 
it would equal, yeah, the square root of 5x minus 1. But that's not the integral we were asked to find, was it? Yes? Can we divide it by 5? We can't, okay? Because think about one of our properties. We have a constant multiple here, right? We have a constant multiple. So you're allowed to take that out, right? So this is 5 halves. So if I left out my dx. All right. This is 5 halves times the integral of 1 over square root of 5x minus 1 dx equals the square root of 5x minus 1. So, like Vicky said, we can now divide by 5 halves or multiply by 2 fifths. Okay? And that will give us the integral of 1 over the square root of 5x minus 1 dx equal to 2 fifths times the square root of 5x minus 1. Which you could write like this if you wanted. Okay? So you kind of see how this works? We take the derivative, then we know what an integral would have been, and then we can use that as a starting point to get the integral we actually wanted. And of course, at the end, we would include our plus c. Mr. Hickson, can you just kind of take us through how you would have done that without multiplying by 5 halves and using the coefficient rule if we just did the derivative of 1 over the root 5x minus 1? Because here you use the rule and you multiply it by like other information, but if we just had to find like the integral of that, um, like can I just oh like if you had to find the integral of this yeah like without with, knowing this you with the question asked um basically what you end up getting is um, something called u substitution. Oh, oh, we don't know how to do that yet. We don't know how to do oh, okay. that yet. All right, because I yeah. didn't realize that I was trying to do it. No, no, we, yeah, we don't know how to do that yet. Uh, we'll look at a little bit of um, integration by substitution, or it's called U substitution. Um, and basically what you end up doing is you recognize, it's almost kind of like a chain rule, so to speak, for integrals. It's not the chain rule, but it's kind of that kind of a concept when you have a function and a function. You have to deal with, so yeah. Is it just an antiderivative? Yes, that's what we're finding here. The antiderivative of this, okay. Um, and you'll notice there's an element to where, you know, you guys know if something was to the negative one half power, what would you do with that? You would add one to the exponent, so it's positive one half power and then you divide by one half, which is the same as times two. Okay, so you can kind of see elements of that in there when you get to the end. All right, so I want to kind of take these, um, I'm going to skip the first few because these ones, um, these ones you guys don't actually need to use this method for. You have rules for these already. Okay? But let's skip down to one where you will need to uh, to do it. For example, number three. Okay? Start by considering what e to the 2x plus 1 is as its derivative, or has as its derivative, and then see if you can't find the integral from there. Okay? Give it a try, and you're welcome to work with somebody.
Stuck in the middle of just like, like, yeah, 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 like half the show. And they were like up on the second story too, like hanging over. Alright. Hey guys, once we figure out this derivative, what integral do we do we know? We don't have what we're looking for yet. We know what the integral is. Hang on, what? Two times the e to the power two x plus one. And that equals Good, e to the 2x plus 1. All right, so that's almost what we want. We don't want this 2, though. Yes, we can use our rule that says the constant multiple of a function when we take the integral equals that constant multiple times the integral. Okay? All right, so now we have the integral that we want, but it's times 2. So obviously we then just divide by 2. The integral of e to the 2x plus 1 dx equals 1 half e to the 2x plus 1. Okay? We add c as well. Yes. Yes. You do it in c. When do we add c? Because I'm really confused about that. Always. You always add C unless you have actual values that you're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus with. Unless you have an interval. So any indefinite integral, you're going to do the plus C with. Okay. By the way, technically here, you had a plus C. Okay. And technically you're multiplying C by a half as well. All right, but c is any constant, so you wouldn't put c over 2. All right, you just, and that's why you can just wait till the very end to, to add it on. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to let you guys do is, is use the remainder of our time 
as much as you need to work through the rest of these. Some of these we already know rules for, so you don't need to use derivatives to find them. However, others like number four, um, you know, other ones here, you will need to, okay? And seven and eight are good ones because they involve sine and cosine, all right? We'll see if we can't find a rule for dealing with sine and cosine. Um, and then there's some others here as well, okay? It's even one with the natural log. One thing I will say is that, remember our rules right now will, will allow us to do any polynomial function, okay? Because we have the sum of functions, we have the constant multiple, we can do any polynomial. All right. If we have something like this, 2x plus 1 to the 4th, or actually I should say uh, 2x plus 1 cubed, if you can't figure out how to do it with the derivative, what could you do? How could we find this integral without using the derivative? Chain rule? Uh, that's how we would find a derivative. There isn't really a chain rule for integrals. But what we do have rules to do any polynomial, right? So what could we do? We could factor it. Well, multiply it out. Yeah. We could go ahead and cube this out. All right. And by the way, that's something like on the exam and whatnot. If you see something like this, let's say you're doing a derivative and you forget the chain rule, you can multiply it all out and do the, do the do, uh, derivative that way. Here with the integral, same thing. If you can't figure out how to do it in a more sophisticated way or whatever, you can always just multiply out 2x plus 1 cubed. Then you have a polynomial, and then you're just using your x to the n rule a bunch of times. Okay? So, it takes a little longer, but at least it would be right. So, start with number one. Yeah, you could start with number one. I do have one copy of the textbook if someone wants to use that. But, let me 